This is Chicago from 55 miles away. This is impossible on a ball earth with a radius of 3,959 miles since the highest tip of the tallest building in Chicago would be a minimum of 74 feet behind the horizon. This is Tom Coombs, a member of the cult of scientism and an employee of a fake news organization attempting to rescue a failed cosmological model from the observational evidence by offering a lot of words and hand waving but zero actual evidence of his own. What you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago skyline. Chicago's beyond the horizon, should not be able to see it. However, with the right conditions, we have an inversion. We have cold air near the cold lake water and some relatively warmer air above it. This will bend the image of that uh, skyline back towards the viewer. Did you notice that Tom didn't offer one shred of evidence to support his claim? That's because the entirety of Tom's evidence is as follows. I know we live on a ball, therefore we couldn't see Chicago from Grand Mere State Park. Therefore, we're seeing a mirage and not Chicago itself. I promise you that is the 100% extent of his, quote, evidence. And I can prove it. Let's start with this time lapse from the same Joshua Nowicki that took the other Chicago photo. First of all, we can barely make out some faint buildings here because of the orange in the sky. But what if there's a building here? We wouldn't see it. What if this is where Chicago was? For example, can you see the buildings over here? Nope, but you will. So we got the same Chicago. Sometimes you can see it good. Sometimes you can't. There's those buildings over here. Finally showing up. Now you can really start to see it better because the lights are going on. But notice something. You see this building right here? You see its height? It's there the whole time. How is that Mirage managing to stay there on the horizon all day long as he's shooting this time lapse? But here's where it gets good right here. Now you'll notice real refraction starting to happen. See that? That is real refraction. Look at those buildings just mirroring and jumping around. Here's the point though. In order to have a refracted image up above, which is almost always an upside down image of the one below it, you can see here in this spot, this is just upside down of that, this is just an upside down version of that, and so on all the way down. This is upside down of that, but in order to have that, you have to have the bottom original image. What's the refraction people's claim on this one? That the bottom part, this part that's been here the whole time, that's a refraction. And at some point during the evening, the refraction of Chicago started refracting. You see, we just run into absurdity with these refraction claims. The idea is that objects can project themselves up over a curb plant themselves right on the horizon perfectly as if you were seeing the actual thing on a flat earth. It's ridiculous. What you're seeing here is a mirage of a mirage. Wrap your head around that one. Anyway, here's the undeniable proof that the only, quote, evidence that a distant object is a refracted mirage instead of the real thing depends entirely on knowing whether or not we should be able to see that object at that distance on a ball earth. My proof comes in the form of this photograph, although any photograph of a distant object will do, and it comes in the form of a challenge. I posit that nobody on God's flat earth can determine via the scientific method whether this distant mountain is real or a mirage without first knowing the eye height and distance of the observer. Now, since I know in advance that my challenge will not be accepted, let alone satisfied, all you ball earthers who cry refraction every time we show something that should be hidden behind curvature need to accept the undeniable fact that your claims of refraction and miraging depend entirely 
on whether or not we should be able to see that distant object and nothing else whatsoever. We will accept your inability to satisfy my challenge as acknowledgement of this fact and will regard any and all past and future appeals to refraction as the completely unsubstantiated rescuing devices that they've always been. In short, don't claim refraction or miraging if your only evidence for it is that we're seeing something that we shouldn't be able to see on a ball earth. It only serves to make your case appear weak and pathetic. Okay, I'll be waiting for the answers to whether this distant mountain is a mirage or a real mountain. Thanks for watching.